All right, 2.3, quick graphs of linear equations. The y-intercept, it's where it crosses the y-axis at. That's where the y-intercept is, which is very helpful to do these quick graphs. And you plug in 0 for x and solve for y, and your answer is the y-intercept. So whenever you plug a 0 in for x and solve for y, that will give you the y-intercept. Uh, so for some reason, the y-intercept is not written by itself. You can still find it. Um, y-intercept, uh, the easiest thing here is you normally have the form y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope, and b is the y-intercept. So b stands for the y-intercept in that problem, and the m stands for the slope. This disk will self-destruct in five seconds. So we're taking a look at this. If we had this equation right here, 2x plus 3. What we're saying is, is if I plugged in a 0 and solved, right, if I plugged in a 0, 2 times 0 uh, plus uh, 3 is 3. So that gives you your answer. And as I stated, when you plug in 0, that's your y-intercept. And guess what? The number right there by itself is the y-intercept. If I plug in a 1, 2 times 1 is uh, 2 plus 3 is 5. And if you wanted to think about it that way, if I plug in those two and try to find the slope of it, 5 minus 3 is 2, 1 minus 0 is 1, so 2 over 1 is the slope, which is also the number that's hanging out right in front. So as you can see, I could use those two to give me the slope and the uh, y-intercept, or I can just stare at them and go, oh look, um, the number out in front of the x is a 2, and the number hanging out there by itself is the y-intercept, and that's a 3. The next problem, yeah, I can plug in a 0, and when I do I get a 2. I can plug in a 1 and I get a 1. And I can do all the math here, 1 minus 2 and 1 minus 0 to get negative 1. Or, once again, I can just look here at the equation and go the number out in front of the x is the slope, which is negative 1. The number by itself, 2, is the y-intercept. All right, when I look at this, I plug in a 0, right? If I plug in a 0 here, I get negative 4 is my answer. And if I plug in a 1, I get negative 3.5. I still can just plug it all in, right? Negative 3.5 minus negative 4 and 1 minus 0. When I bop bop those, I end up getting a half over 1, or I just get 1 half. 1 half is the number out in front of the x, which is the slope. Negative 4, right? Negative 4 is the y-intercept because it's hanging out there by itself, so I got a negative 4 right there. Negative 2x. If I plugged in a 0, right? Uh, if I plugged in a 0, negative 2 times 0 is 0. If I plugged in a 1, uh, we get negative 2. So when I go and plug these in, negative 2 minus 0 is negative 2. 1 minus 0 is 1. So look at it like this. The this, this slope is whatever's with the x. That's negative 2. There is no number here. So if there is no number sitting there hanging out, right? If there is no number hanging out there, then 0 is the y-intercept. And right here, if you plugged in 0 for this problem, you would you know, not be able to because x is what you plug in, so we can't plug anything in. However, there is no slope to something like this. There is absolutely no slope to something like this. However, the y-intercept of this line is always the constant number, the number by itself. So there is a 7, so... 7 is the y-intercept there for, for a constant line. So the question I have for you, what did you notice about the slope and the y-intercept? Well, you should have noticed, just like we talked about before, uh, the slope-intercept form. And the number out in front of the x is the slope, and the number all by itself is the y-intercept. Right, we got the slope right there, and we have the y-intercept right there. So graphing equations in slope-intercept form. First, you need to make sure that the equation is written in slope-intercept form. If it's not, you need to solve the equation and make it written in that form. So you might need to solve for y in order to uh, get it to be like that. Then find the y-intercept and plot that point. It will be on the y-axis. So somewhere on the y-axis, you're going to plot the y-intercept. And then you find the slope and you use it to form a second and third point, or more if need be. And then you draw a line to connect them. So y equals 4x plus 2. Here's how you go about graphing it. 
This two is a slope intercept. That means from the middle I go up one, two, and I put a point. All right, because that's the y intercept, zero, two. Put it there. This is the slope. That four is the slope. We would rewrite that slope as four over one. What that means is from the y intercept I count up one, two, three, four, and over one. Because remember, the slope is rise over run. That's what we talked about, right? That's the slope. So this is rise over run. Rise meaning up, run meaning to the left or right. So up four over one. And I could go up four again and over one, or it's the reverse. How else could I get a positive four with the slope? I could rewrite this as negative four and negative one, right? Negative over a negative. So what that means is I could also go down one, two, three, four, and left one and put a point if I really wanted to. So I have all my points, I connect them with a line, and there they are. Um, next up is a negative 1 here. So negative 1 is the y-intercept. So that means from the center I go down 1 and put a point. The slope of that line is 5, which is like 5 over 1. So that means I go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over 1. I could even go up 5 and over 1 again. If I wanted to, I could go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and left 1 and it would still cross to the point because the opposite of 5 over 1 is negative 5 over negative 1. <laughs> so you are buying a $1,100 uh, computer, $1, computer on layaway. You make $250 deposit and then make weekly payments according to the equation uh, A equals 850 minus 50T. Um, where A is the amount you owe, and t is the amount of weeks. So what's the original amount? Well, the original amount is what you started with, or like the y-intercept. The number with the variable is never the y-intercept. It's the number all by itself. That's the y-intercept, and that number all by itself was 850. So we need to rewrite this equation into that form, and here it is, negative 50t plus 850. So the original amount is where it crosses the y-axis at, which is the y-intercept, or 850. Okay, that's how much that he was able to put down on it. All right, so then what's your weekly payment? Well, that's your rate. Your rate right here is the the slope, which is the $50. The slope is the rate of change, which is negative 50. Thus, the amount we owe changes by $50 per week. So your weekly payment is $50. Watch out for that first step. It's juicy. So we're going to go up by 100s here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 850 would be right there then. Okay, and then we're going to go uh, over by twos. So what that means is we're going to go down 50 and over uh, 1, which is kind of right in the middle. And then we go down 50 and over 1, down 50, over 1, and so on the whole way down. And you can see the line right there. So we want to figure out when we get this all paid off. We're going to get it paid off when obviously it gets down to the bottom. It crosses the x-axis at 17. The x-axis is time, so the computer will be paid off in 17 uh, weeks uh, is when it will be paid. So yes, it'll be paid off in 17 weeks because it's going to cross the 17, right? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. And about 17 is where it crosses. Am I right or am I right or am I right? So when we come back, we will talk about standard form and finish up 2.3, which is quick graphs of functions.